This is DMT speaking to you from Rabbit Holes. Paula Gloria, who is my new friend, and it is very great. So today I'm sitting with Mark. So, because he told me before the show, we meet here and we talk. And he said that, oh, I don't believe in those kind of things that someone is God. At the end, I believe that I'm God myself. And I say, let's talk about it. So right now, the microphone is for you, Mark, asking me everything you want. Uh, well, I haven't really seen too much of your work yet. I know you're very scholarly and wrote some interesting books. So I don't know your philosophy at this point, but I would like to know more. Vance, you asked the right question. Actually, I am DMT standing for Dr. Mark Truong, but more importantly, it stands for Digital Master Teacher. That means I come right here on this earth to teach about a new software. Now, that new software is called God 3.0. Cool. And that answer to what you told me before. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> so now, why is it cool? Because actually, if you ask me, the human being is like computer. And actually, the computer is like human being because it's product of the human mind to get it an extension of the human mind. So, but my main point right now here is as a computer, we as human being have two parts, software and hardware. The software is the mind, the hardware is the body. And now, if I concentrate on the, what we call God is a software, God is actually an icon, a new, not a new really, a basic software to help the human mind to work. For example, at the beginning when the first software called God by Moses was created, it was created for a purpose of telling the Hebrews who were enslaved in Egypt to get out of the country and to become free man. So now, the main point is, what should we do as free people? You see? And therefore, we had to make up a kind of program to tell them what to do. Same way is software for computer to direct the printer, to direct the screen, to direct the mouse. You see, all those had to be connected in such a way that's called the basic operating system, DOS at first, invented by Microsoft with Bill Gates. And therefore, later on, they changed it to upgrade it to Windows. So those are basic programs to help the computer to run the program. So the software of God first is the basic software for the human being to know how to behave themselves. And the main contents of that program is called the Old Testament. And that's based on the teaching of the Ten Commandments. And now, if you want to ask, people say, where is that Ten Commandments coming from, from? And they say, from God. But actually, now, not to be too boring, I would ask you a few questions. Because it seems like you don't know what to say. Let me ask you a few questions. One of the basic stuff right in the, New Te uh, in the Old Testament to see why it's basic stuff. For example, why do you think that there is such a commandment as saying, Thou shalt not kill. Well, I guess uh, all of it is to keep stability in the society. What? To, to survive? Yes. Okay. Do you need God, really? Let me say, ask you a good question. Was it really a commandment of God for the first time telling Moses on the Mount Sinai mm -hmm. that, Now you listen to me. Thou shalt not kill. Meaning that before that, Nobody knows that it's wrong to kill anybody, yeah. right? <laughs> it's hard to believe, isn't it? Right? <laughs> it's hard to believe it's that before believe. God giving the commandment to Moses, saying, thou shalt not kill, everybody was killing. You are right. That was not so. So what does that mean? And of course now, if you say God speaks to you, they'll put you into a nut house for <laughs> the crazy people. So but in those days, it was okay. We believe they, they had the word directly from. Just to amuse yourself now, so that I'm not going to be a moralist, I would tell you 
that actually when Moses say that thou shalt not kill is a commandment from God, it proves what? It proves that he was a liar when he made that commandment to people. You know why? And the whole Old Testament is not good based on that. And this is, let's say, spoken by God 3.0, knowing the whole thing, what they wrote about me, and that's wrong. I can prove it to you. It proves that there was no God, according to Moses. And here's how you see it. Before he went to the desert, Jesus, Moses was still in Egypt, according to the Bible. And what one boy, when he saw that there's a Egyptian soldier, kill an Egyptian, uh, kill a Hebrew. He doesn't like it, so he killed the Egyptian soldier. Do you know that story or you don't know? I'm not a scholar on the Bible in any way. That part is not the scholar, just read it. That's yeah, well, no. that, that part. But don't you don't even know that, and you don't... I, mean, I don't sure. even want to know. But, but, let, <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you. It's the so, weirdest book I ever saw in my life. All right. So whatever it is... <laughs> so whatever it to is... To say it's the word of God, it's really ridiculous. You know, Alice in Wonderland would probably be better. Wow. So <laughs> you are even against that more than I am. I'm just showing... You. I don't let, know. It's a strange pick. <laughs> let, 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 let me tell you why. So, he killed the Egyptian, let's say, soldier, okay? And after that, he looked to the right, he looked to the rep, left, and he saw nobody. It literally literal written that way. And then he hit the guy, the cadavers, the dead body of the Egyptian soldier under the sand. And then he think that's good. Nobody know anything about it. He's God. Except that somehow, it doesn't explain in the Holy Bible, he still, that job was still revealed. And he was sought for by the Egyptian kings for murder. And now he ran into the desert. And now he met a bunch of girls who become their, his uh, wife. And then one day, he's good, he go on the Mount Sinai. And then he saw God, God say, thou shalt not let's say kill is one of the command commandments. <clears throat> so why did Moses choose that commandments? It's because instinctively he wants to make sure that the commandments allow him to justify his murder. Why? Because he said that the Egyptian soldier who killed the Hebrew was a murderer. And therefore, that guy had to be killed, executed. So by that time, by doing that, he showed that he is actually the executioner, and he is also the judge, his jury, and everything. So he installed himself as the guy who did justice, as the leader of the Hebrews. So therefore, for the Egyptian, he was a uh, sought for murderer. But for the Hebrews, of course, he's a hero. Next best thing to God, right? Mm -hmm. Next after right. God, right? Oh, do you hear me? Because this is falling down, Paul. The, vo the, the Okay. So now, I can say that no God gave him that commandment. Why? Because actually he knew already it was wrong to kill anyway. And all what he did was to justify himself. So did Moses need God to know that commandment, to know that murder was wrong? He did not know or do that. So it's wrong for him to say that God gave him for the first time the commandment that he knew already, he applied already, and he did everything about it. So now, of course, the law in Egypt forbid murder. So, you don't need to listen to God to know for the first time in your life that thou shalt not kill. Actually, the commandments of thou shalt not kill come from where now? From what you say, from God. But that's your inner God. I didn't say that. You did. Okay. From God, but then that is the inner God from man. That's why I tried to say. Yeah. That's what you say so before. 
So it comes from man, and I would tell you how from man. When you say thou shalt not kill, what do you mean? You tell another guy not to kill, and who are you compared to the guy to whom you give the order of not to kill? You are another guy. So it turned out to be, and it's not a far-fetched reasoning, you tell the guy, don't kill me. Yeah, so most of the time, if people just treat people the way they would like to be treated, then it takes care of itself. That's not my point for now. My point right now is well, when you give point. the... Okay, that's fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> but for now, I'm just saying that when you say, thou shalt not kill, you mean thou shalt not kill me. And my point is that you don't need any God to make that kind of commandments. Yeah. Because any, we are talking right now against the Bible. And if there's some biblical zealot who come right mm -hmm. here and discover me talking and they want to shoot at me, what will I say? Stop, don't shoot. Don't kill me. Yeah. I don't need any God to say that. It comes right out from my heart by my instinct of preservation. They See? do teach you not to kill others, though, not just me. <laughs> so, so, but, but you see my point right now? So when you do that, it come out from man. So you don't need really any God. Or if there is no God, that's man is God. God is within yourself to say that. So it go quite well with all the other commandments. For example, you have commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. It turn out to say what now? if you understand my reasoning, according to you. Well, I mean, you say what you mean. I, I don't... Think, okay. You know. I'm asking because that's the show for both of us. Otherwise, it would be a monologue. So let me tell you. Very simple. When you say shall not, it means thou shall not sleep with my wife. If not, you hear from me. I'll stone you to death. I will blow your head up. That's all. So when they say thou shall Let's say not lie. It means don't lie to me. Nobody want to be ripped up. Nobody want to be cheated. Up, cheated. That's it. Everything, and even the fourth commandments. Let's say oh, one, one commandment that is very interesting: Thou shalt work for six days, and one day thou shalt stop working. You know why? Because that day is the day of the Lord. Because the Lord God make the world for six days and seven days, he take a rest. You, you, you think that is true? You don't know. All right, let me tell you. <laughs> it's not true because if you're God, you, do, you are not get tired so fast after six days. What can I say? All right. I think, I mean, it was all so long ago that nobody even knows if it was written properly, translated pro It was translated so many times, nobody really knows anything that was originally intended in the first place. And, and then what, how valid is it? came from people, as you said. It came from people from this world. Actually, it is the way to give to the worker a break. Because before that, the worker who was slave in Egypt, the Hebrews, they are expected to work seven days a week, yeah. 24 almost hours a day. Mm -hmm. So it is very, very valuable for them to get one day off. It made sense to set up a structure right. for society. Right, right. So that is a clever way to fight for the rights of the workers. And that's why our one week you had the Sabbath day that would be secret. Secret is because without it, the worker would die of exhaustion. So I would give you a good example. So now, when you violate any one of the Ten Commandments, all those guys who follow it would say, Oh, yeah, that's no good. You cannot do that. You see what I mean now? But here is my point. Actually, all the Ten, co ten Commandments... If they survive, it's interest of man. So the good example I gave you on that commandment that thou shalt work six days and then thou shalt have one Sabbath day is very meaningful. Because you know what? The day when, and it come to it already, 
the worker instead of one day a week off, right? And he had to work six days. So the commandment saying, thou shalt work six days. But now, it comes to a time when with modern industry and people can work five days a week instead of two days. That means you have not only Sunday, but you have Saturday off. Do you have anybody who would make a big fuss about the violation of the commandment that says, for thou shalt work six days a week? Now you can laugh. You see that, my nice point? nice to have four days. <laughs> That's exactly my point, too. So when it comes to the future, when you work only four days and have three days off, right? I don't see anybody going out in the street by saying, uh-huh, they're not going to violate the commandment that God said, thou shalt work six days a week. They always go by their interest. So the commandments are great because that is what? That is the list of the human right at the beginning. So, and a minimum, a minimum human rights list. And that the Old Testament of the Jews, which are so valuable for them, and they can look at me right now and see if I tell the truth. That is their constitution of those guys who come out of Egypt as slaves, and now they have their rights, the Bill of Rights and their constitution to protect them and to show how to live as a free people. That is very interesting. And that explains why, I will tell you. That's why I'm talking about software only. Now, you see that in the modern America, and you see that there's a lot of black people who are very religious, who love God, who would respect the Bible, no doubt about it, okay? Here's my point. How come that those guys still, a lot of them, and I say it bluntly, hate the guts of the Jews? Is that not a contradiction? On one hand, you love God, and you know that it comes from the Bible, and you still love the Bible. On the other hand, you hate the guts of the Jews. And there's only one guy who can look at the camera for the whole world to listen to. That's DMT 3.0, who can say the fine truth. And I, because I'm going to explain that, not because anybody is bad. That's why I can afford doing that. You know why now? The black people love the Bible and still hate the guts of the Jews. Because the Bible actually, as I said, only software, a scenario for you to live by, a way to liberate yourself from slavery. So the black people who was taken to America as slaves, and they at one point get freed. So they understand very much the scenario of that. That means of how to conduct yourself in life in a successful manner as a community so that you can liberate yourself as a free man. So as a scenario, they love it. No doubt about it. So when you say, do you believe in God? Yes. That means what? That means you go by the Ten Commandments. That means you would have your life protected because we prohibit murder. We protect your right to be treated righteously. You would be protected for the right to work. You are protected for the right to take some rest after you're working too hard. See? So those are, and the right to justice too. So those are basic human rights. That's how they love it. But then, if you talk about the Jews who may compete with you, other way, and they're smarter, they get more money, they run the market better than you, and you're still poor, so you hate the guts of those guys. That's what you think. So you see, but their scenario, their successful scenario to help you to organize a community, you adopt that, and you do that. So now it's explained more clearly why the Bible itself is only a software, a rules of conduct to help people to do it. So now, let's go to God 2.0. Who already modified it? And to see why that rule of Ten Commandments, which are so successful, so basic, was still modified when Jesus came along. And that would become the second version. And I call it God 2.0.
and it comes very handy because that's a new version of the same thing except that this man here came or they claim it for him he's son of God so second generation so you have God 1.0 God 2.0 a second generation and you I know that you still don't like it and you don't want to believe in any one of them because you want now to believe in yourself God is within yourself but with that scenario I already show that how those guys answer ways and so in themselves the Jews with the software of God 1.0 they are God 1.0 user they stick together and they are very successful and that's how they survive for thousands of years against persecution and it become only wrong is when they become persecutor themselves that's very confusing on one hand you oppress people and that's good to fight to get your right but when you are already the liberated people you had to think of those guys who are not liberated and fight for them now otherwise you switch the role around and you become the oppressor again the oppressee so 13 years after the first Bible or the Old Testament was written here come along Jesus and he find out that there's something missing there's something to be improved and you know what find out new lesson of love and forgiveness that's what's missing as I explained already to Paula in the, the other show that is not a new commandment it's just a way to implement and to enforce the rule of the Ten Commandments so we take the example again the murder is still no good the murder still is wrong and we have to punish the murderer but instead of being stoned to death very quickly you may get at least a fair trial and then you may not get the death penalty you may get let's say life sentence even when it's true so the enforcement of the law is becoming more lenient so it's based on Jesus teaching of love and forgiveness so now I give you another reasoning behind that that nobody on this whole world knew about so that bring out to something new you know what to you wh why did where did Jesus get that lesson now you can smile again you look too stern you look like too worried about it now <laughs> I'm not worried I'm just listening okay so I'm asking you where did Jesus get those two lessons you tell me you're ah, okay all right all right all right <laughs> I try to have a conversation here. No, you're not. Oh, no, I'm not. So you are. <laughs> so apparently you are very much against me. So speed it out. I'm what do you have against you? I just oh. you have your own agenda. So continue. Thank you very much. You know, Thank you very not much. You're interested in a conversation. You're interested in teaching what you want people to believe. So you should do that. You should not blame it on me. I'm talking. I'm, I'm asking you, and I'm you just don't. Saying, go ahead. Talk. All right. Then, then they say it nicely. All right. At least we are on TV. We fight also, let's say, behind the camera. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So let me continue to see to show that. Where well, I'm telling you, you look too stern. You look too happy. You know, you don't need to do that. Just tell what you want to tell. Oh, now you are right. I'm sorry. Yeah, you don't have to be insulting. No, no. No, I'm just saying something like uh, you. You don't like what I'm saying. That's no, I didn't say that. I didn't like it. Then it's all I right. I just don't have anything to add to it. So that's all right. Let let go ahead. All right. Yeah. Well. All right. So now. <coughs> so it's working good. Actually, people would see why this guy is not too much again. DMT got 3.0. Like he's going to blow his head up. All right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> so right now, I explain to you one thing that nobody knows. The whole Christianity with one billion people. They don't know where Jesus gets the lesson of love and forgiveness from. Is that not worth talking about now? I don't know. Mark? Okay. I'd like to, to me. know what 3.0 has to do. Now you should tell the next phase. Oh, okay. Basically, yeah, right. People know these things already. Oh, okay. So, let's say. I'm not going to explain where he gets his lesson. But I that is. People care all right. about they want to know what you think is the next step in evolution. You're right, but you're wrong. 
I give you a background to show the difference. Because if I can blend, uh, blend out my teaching, which is I call RPR and AR, nobody understand anything anyway. So you see, to understand something, you have to go by the background. Because assuming I can give you more than just RPR and AR by saying reliability, productivity, respectability of people's life, property, and freedom. That's my teaching of God 3.0 is compared to the Ten Commandments or the Ten Commandments plus love forgiveness of God 2.0, Jesus. So I say it. I didn't hide it. But maybe people say, yes, too short. Develop a little, then I'm going to do that. That's all what I'm doing. Mm. Is that not enough for you? So right now, let me tell you one thing. I feel amusing because I try also to, have, to entertain a, an audience here. All right. So where did Jesus get you can ask me, by the way, why did I get my lesson teaching people up here in AR? That part you can ask. You want to ask? Then I answer. If not, I ask you, where did Jesus get the lesson of love and forgiveness? We make the foundation of Christianity. And I, I ask that because, of course, I have a good answer. See, I'm not stupid. So, I tell you, he get it. He doesn't get from God like most people say. Because had it come from God 1.0, then it had to be in the Ten Commandments. And the Jew would have known about that. Or they would try to say that love, forgiveness is included in the Ten Command Commandments anyway. But for me, you know it comes from, from Jesus' spiritual father. And who is Jesus' spiritual father? Not God in, in heaven. God the Father, it comes from Joseph. Yes, it comes from Joseph. Joseph is actually... God the Father, because they do mention a character who is characterized or whose name is God the Father. And who is literally God the Father, according to me now. And you can debate that point. I suggest that it is God, it is Joseph. That means his dead father. And why so? Because when he was born, of course, his mother, Mary, had to be pregnant from another entity. I don't want to say a man or God. Another entity than Joseph himself. That part is written in the Bible. So now, it put Joseph in a big trouble. It's written right in the Bible. Maybe you don't know that part of the Bible either. Okay. I just assume that you don't. Well, you know, I think that your story is another story. You know, I don't accept it any more than the Bible. I, it's just another story. It's your interpretation doesn't mean it's absolutely true. Because you say Joseph is the father doesn't mean it's the truth. That's what you see it as. <laughs> now you're talking, except that... You know, maybe it's we, not Mark, Mark, for I, anybody to buy into that my, story Mark, either. That's why I'm telling you up front right there is <laughs> that part is my interpretation of the Bible, uh, and so far, since you are really not interested in the Bible at all, then you don't even know that what I just say next was literally in the Bible yet. It's not my interpretation. I'm just no, helping I didn't you out. Say it wasn't in the Bible. So, so it was there. So let me finish, and I would see the, my point. Oh, you are not interested in my point. Okay. So let's say it was said that he had a big trouble what to do with his wife who is pregnant from another entity. It says that in the Bible. And then an angel of the Lord, whatever, appeared to him by saying,